South Africa is fast approaching the 8,000 mark when it comes to coronavirus infection. It has been confirmed by the health department now in South Africa. Cases. 17 more South Africans have succumbed to the coronavirus. We reported over 1,000 COVID-19 cases in 40 African countries. COVID-19 brought a major change in how we look at food. The concept of food security used to be a very theoretical, almost an academic concept. COVID-19 in most of the third world brought about the fact that there isn't enough food. In any disaster situation, people are stretched beyond their ability. When it comes to any kind of disaster response, that is uh, the first things that we, we look at. Are, are people safe? Uh, do they have a safe place to stay? Do they have food? Do they have water? Um, so that is, that's a, a common thread that you can see runs through all kinds of disaster situations. And now with the COVID-19, in the weeks and months to come, we, we might see even a bigger knock-on effect um, because those basic needs won't be met. And we will have to do that. Someone will have to fill the gap in the market or people need to do something else within their um, abilities to ensure that they, they do have food. Probably what we need to do is we need to find a product that is as affordable as possible and also that needs as little added to it as possible. We basically had only one place where we could go to find that product and that was at Seafair. It started about 22 years ago uh, with research that we did at the university. I started with postgraduate studies. It developed from a research group within the university up to 2007, if I remember correctly, when it spun out of the university as a commercial enterprise. And from then, we've been driving it as CFAM Technologies, supplying quality extrusion equipment to, to Africa and the world. The Extrusion Sustainability Circle basically encompass all the aspects of the whole industry around extrusion. So first of all, we sit with the natural resources, the grains that's being produced on the farm. Now for that grain to grow, we're getting the energy from the sun. So the sun effectively supplying us with the energy for the plants to grow. From there, that energy in the plant then goes to the processing plant where we supply the grains and then it is processed and beneficiated into a more valuable product. The other reason also why we need to process those products is the reason that because we as humans need to eat cooked food. We cannot digest uncooked grains and pulses. From the, the processing plant, we're sitting now with a value-added product which is then distributed to the network to the end consumer. So that is the whole process then effectively from energy flowing from the sun all the way into the grains, to the processing plant, through the distribution channel, to the food that in the end we eat. And we eat the food to get energy. So that's the energy flow. Now going backwards across that flow is the money flow stream. So that's the money that the end user pay to the distributor, the distributor pays to the processing plant, and the processing plant buy the food once again, the raw materials from the farmer and that creates that whole sustainability circle which then just goes on and on and with the sun supplying all the renewable energy to the system that creates us then that sustainability circle which can grow and grow and become stronger and stronger and that is also why a sustainability circle and a way looking at extrusion in overall can become a very important player in their economic revitalization of the developing world after COVID-19. Farming is all about management and the right management. And then again, um, you have to use what God gave you. And God gave you the sun. God gave you water. And the soil. And if you have those circles, to compete and to, to get your, your crop growing, 
And, and I'm on a no tillage basis. And no tillage is to have the microbes working for you, to have the, your soil drinking the water. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new technique that started off in Argentina and I think it's, it's penetrating the whole world. And Africa is the perfect place because we have the best soils, we have good water as well. So we must just learn how to use this God-given soil, water and sun to, to create our crops. was established as a spin-off company of the NWU in 2007 to commercialize and further develop the technology. One of the products manufactured using the technology is a maize porridge which contains sufficient nutrients to meet the recommended dietary allowance. All porridges are also fortified with essential vitamins, minerals and immune boosters. The porridge is fully cooked in an extrusion factory Extrusion is a continuous cooking process that is ideal for producing large amounts of food. The high cooking temperatures and pressures ensure that the food produced is sterile and thus safe. The CFAM factory has the capacity to produce 240,000 meals per day. There are more than 60 extruders operating in Southern Africa and plants are being erected in Canada, Northern Ireland and Pakistan. The prepared porridges are packed in 5 kg polypropylene bags with plastic liners for improved food safety and longer shelf life. The open edges of the bags are folded and then stitched for enhanced protection against insect infestation. A single family bag will be enough to feed a family of 5 for a week. The product will last for 6 months if the bag remains sealed. For a meal of 250 grams, mix 50 gram dry porridge and 200 ml cold water or milk. The cost of such a meal is only one rand and no additional cooking is needed. The 5 kilogram family bags are then loaded and transported directly to the consumer. CFAM has also developed a wonderful way of dispensing the porridge to the consumer by means of their food ATM. When you look at the rest of the efforts in the world of providing relief to communities, it's a very basic food stuff. It would mean something where people would actually require to have energy to cook something. The logistics of transporting it, getting to the people would be a huge challenge. And I think this was overwhelming in the sense that this product actually filled, addressed all those issues. It was pre-cooked, it was, it was ready to eat. You didn't need energy to make it eatable. Um, and, and that was the beauty of it. The Kruger National Park is situated in a very poor part of South Africa. Um, we've got about 2 million to 3 million people on our boundary and uh, they are really very poor people. We are uh, also looking at ways how to engage and assist our communities on a, just to improve their, their situation because they, they are neighbors and if they struggle, we struggle. So when we heard about this food, um, instant uh, uh, porridge, food ATM uh, uh, principle, uh, we decided let's look at it. Uh, we got a bit of funding and we said, we're gonna try and test it here in Skukuza because most of our staff actually are from the neighboring communities. We believe that this is a solution and that's why we developed it. So that you can help larger amounts of people without getting bogged down in the logistics of the operation. It turned out to be a good solution. A solution we've actually thought of a long time ago, but the opportunity didn't quite present itself to be so applicable to the current circumstances. It's always good fun when, when you've got this, this dream and this idea and 
and we as a team bring it to fruition, you actually see it work. So that, that makes it worthwhile. If it works here, if it is acceptable to our staff, if they like the taste of it, of it and the concept works, then we can start rolling it out perhaps to our neighboring communities. The food is distributed with an e-coupon system. The e-coupon's unique number is sent via SMS to the cell phones of the persons that need to get the food. To manage social distancing, the recipient is also informed what time period to collect the food. The e-coupon is only active during the indicated period. Each coupon is validated before food is dispensed. It therefore cannot be used again. The recipients of the e-coupon food are registered on a database. The immediate need is for governments, corporates and NGOs to get involved to establish food oases for communities in need. The food bank uses a rental business model. The food is refilled and topped up in bulk. The long-term solution is to establish regional extrusion processing plants that uses locally produced agricultural products to produce the foods. This will stimulate local economic development that will establish once again sustainable communities. I don't think that there is a solution that is cheaper um, and as universally usable as the solution that is being put on the table by CFAM now. And the fact that it uses basic foodstuffs um, which are available all over Africa, I think just makes it the ideal process to work with. Using extrusion and creating a whole complete uh, sustainable circle of industry, we can actually create quite a number of jobs. So in a value chain that we're creating by doing this, we will create jobs on the farms, we create jobs in the processing plant where people do uh, work in the, far, in the processing plants, and then of course in the whole distribution channel. And then we can use also, because it's a ready to eat product, another opportunity is to actually start a whole informal distribution network where we use street vendors, for example, to sell to the final public. And then we have products like a uh, meal in a cup, a meal on the go. And those are all new innovative ways where we can actually create value chains and distribution channels where we actually keep that money within the community and not into the wholesale and retail environment. I have a community in, in Ikagen called Marikana. <clears throat> it's a very poor community. They, um, they live in uh, harsh circumstances. Um, and we went to deliver, deliver food to them. Um, and coincidentally, it was 30 bags of sea fan porridge. And for me, to see the gratefulness there, if I talk about changing you as a person, those images and seeing where a small thing can make a whole world's difference in somebody's life. It, it encourages you to do more. I think it, it's something you would like to spread to other people, to also have that compassion for other people, to do the small thing, not the big thing. Everybody wants to change the world, but to do the small thing for that one person that can really make a difference in their lives. Not a big thing, just a small thing. And it can do a whole lot for a small family like that.